Ciao friends! In this unplugged video, I want to talk about segment sites in tabular models. A recent feature in Power BI Premium uh, increased the size of the segment when you have large models. This has been announced in uh, uh, Twitter, but it doesn't have a specific blog post. We just have seen that the documentation had been, has been updated and what happened is that the, the segment size, the default segment size uh, used by Power BI for large models is 8 million rows, whereas Power BI usually has 1 million row. So what is the difference and why this feature could be so important and especially when it could be important for your models? So I wanted to try to make a few benchmarks comparing two models, one that has a uh, the default size in Power BI, which is 1 million rows in each segment, and the other that has 8 million rows in each segment. And I will show you when this could affect the performance, improving the performance of the queries, and when this is not so important, depending on the data that you have. So I just prepared for this video. Uh, remember, the unplugged video, we have no cuts, so there could be errors, there could, it could happen everything. Uh, but in order to avoid waiting time at the beginning, I just created this, uh, um, this connection with Duck Studio, these two connections with Duck Studio, where I connected two databases that I loaded in a Power BI workspace. This is a Power BI premium workspace where I have the segment size that has 1 million rows in this connection. And you can see, because I, I want to keep this comment at the beginning, is the easiest way to, to see that we have a, a table that has a 4 billion rows with segment size of 1 million rows for each segment. And in this other connection, as you see, we have to wait a couple of seconds every time we switch the connection. We have 8 million rows in each segment. Now, first of all, so let, let me just quickly sketch what is the difference using the whiteboard. So let's go to the whiteboard and what happens when we have a table. So in my model, I have the audience table, which is a big table that has a 4 billion rows. Audience is my table. Now my table has a 4 billion rows. Now what does it mean? Internally, the engine loads the data, dividing the data in segments. And by default, Power BI has segments that are 1 million rows. So let's say that this is Power BI and the segmentation that made by Power BI is 1 million rows. So we have something like that. Now, if you try to load the same database, the same table in Azure Analysis Services or Analysis Services on-premises, the default segmentation is 8 million rows for each segment. So something like that. You have one every eight segment. You can see that just graphically, you can imagine that the number of segments is smaller and the size of each, each segment is bigger. Now, what is the impact of that? Well, uh, I, as I will explain later, the engine uses the segment as a minimal unit to, to split the calculation across different cores in uh, your machine. And this happens even though you have only one core. So in any case, uh, there is an impact having a larger number of segments. And the advantage of having a smaller number of segments is that you decrease the amount of memory required to process the database. But at query time is not usually an advantage, as we will see in a moment. But what is the impact of that? So let me try to explain. We have to dig into the numbers before doing some, uh, some uh, query. And I prepare, with Vertibac Analyzer, I prepare the, the, um, the metrics. So I basically used this feature, view metrics. I just executed this in advance just to avoid any waiting time. And here we can see that the audience table has 4 billion rows. I can just enlarge this a little bit. And we can see that the audience table has 4 billion rows, but each column has a different number of unique values. And the size of each column is different. Now, for the purposes of the calculation of the engine execution, you will see that the number that is more important is the data size of each column. And you see that there, there is a, a big difference between a few columns like the weight multiplied by age or the weight columns, which are around the two, three gigabytes of RAM, and columns like the age that has only 185 megabytes of RAM. So it's much smaller and it is still divided in many segments. We will see this in a moment. Now, another important metric is the uh, 
uh, the metric we can see in the partitions. You see that audience is split in partitions, but each partition in this uh, in this case uh, with the eight million rows, uh, uh, the, the eight million rows for each segment, the number of segments we have on average for each, for each partition is between uh, 10, 11, 12. This is the number we have. Globally, we have 500 segments for the entire table. Remember, a segment cannot extend over multiple partitions. So the partition could restrict the size of a segment, but cannot enlarge the size of a segment. If I repeat the same analysis using the connection with 1 million rows, we can see that if I go in partitions, and I increase the font a little bit, we have in audience a much larger of segments, a much larger number of segments. We have 3,900 segments, and we have around 90 segments for each partition. So it's not exactly multiplied by eight. I mean, yeah, it's, it's more or less multiplied by eight or something like that, because this is the multiple we have to use. Sometimes the, the, the difference could be not exactly the mathematical multiplication by eight. It depends on the, the way you uh, define the partitions, but usually for large tables, this is what we have. Um, now, one point is, uh, well, if we have a different number of segments, we have a different compression and usually we might expect a better compression where we have a larger segment size so a smaller number of segments should correspond to a better compression let's see whether this is true so if i take a look at the total size of the audience table we have 17 gigabytes and a half if i look at the version that has the larger segment which uh, should be smaller Actually, it is not smaller at all. So we could be disappointed by that. So if you expect that just because you increase the segment size, you get a better compression, you could be disappointed. It could happen. There could be a better compression, but it depends. It depends on many factors. And in this particular table, we don't see a particular advantage for the compression size. So why should be better? Why should it be better to have a better compression? We will see this in a moment. So let's say that i want to try to sum one column in this table for, so for example i want to sum a, a big column so a, a column that has a larger data size here so i i want to sum the weight multiplied by age and i try to write the easiest uh, evaluate statement that requires a full scan of the table to retrieve the data so let's write uh, a sum of the audience uh, and weight multiplied by age. So maybe we can reduce the font a little bit. And so this is more visible in the screen. And here we go. Okay, so I can run this code, but before running the code, I have to enable the server timing. So let's move my face here. So I click on server timings so that I will see the execution time in terms of uh, storage engine and formula engine. And when this uh, is ready, let's check in the output. Sometimes it takes a few seconds to start the trace uh, on uh, Power BI Premium. So I, won't, I always want to check that the query started message appears here. So I go back in server timings and I want to run this query by clearing the cache and then run the query. And I will repeat the execution two or three times, getting the best execution time just to, to, to get the best, the best value I can get from the different executions. So this execution, so let's enlarge this a little bit. We see that we have a single storage engine query. In this case, we have a um, total consumption of five, 560 milliseconds, 550 milliseconds in the storage engine and around eight seconds of con total consumption of CPU. So let me write down these numbers. So I create a comment here. So we have 560 and 8266. Actually, I want to just monitor the storage engine. So I want to I want to get this number 550 and 8266. So I repeat the I repeat the same execution a couple of times and I write down the numbers 525 and I have 6859 and then I repeat this again. In the meantime, I can fix this. And now you see that Oh, it's still improving, but this is this depends on a number of factors. So the reason the reason why I have to do this, uh, I had to run this is mul multiple times is because Power BI is, share, is is running this uh, queries in a shared environment. There could be uh, noisy neighborhood, and so 
you see every time I am getting no this time I, I'm not getting a better number it's important to see both numbers because actually the number I care more about is this one the second one even though what user see is only the first one but the the second one the biggest number is what actually tells me what is the actual consumption in terms of CPU for the structure uh, the reduction of the waiting time could depend on how many cores were available at the moment of the execution but I cannot control that okay so now we have a few numbers here now I repeat the same execution in uh, the version that has uh, the segment size that has only one mineral so we have many more segments in this case so let's reduce the size of this a little bit so it is visible and I try to uh, oh I have to run the server timings in this case it is already running so let's see if this is uh, started okay so let's try to run this okay it is started server timings and we have in a moment the execution time so you see that the, the, the number is bigger but I don't trust to match the first execution so I, I just keep the first execution at all so I will run three execution without considering the first one I know that the first one is usually uh, much slower so let's see 626-9375 so let's try again and second execution it takes uh, around the same time actually this is a little bit slower 99563 and let's run a last time and let's see what happens and I I want to explain in a moment why we have different numbers because remember the content of the table is identical I'm I process the same database and the best execution is this one whereas the best execution for the eight million rows uh, is uh, this one so let's open Excel. We, we have to do some math. So the best thing is using Excel and we use Excel to compare the, the, the numbers. So let's go here. So we want to see the, so I have, let's say the storage engine CPU and the storage engine waiting time. So these are the two numbers I want to compare. I want to move this here and I have the two versions one million rows eight million rows here we go so this is the eight million rows so it is uh, uh, five one five I get the best execution which is actually the third one five one eight and seven seven zero three and let's get the best execution for the one million rows which is a six uh, six fifty two and six of uh, ninety five sixty three. Okay, sorry, I have to mute the <laughs> teams. It's uh, busy teams. Let's see, I cannot. Oh, come on, one second only. Status, do not disturb. Okay, here we go. So, um, why, why um, did I? make this uh this copy because i want to see what is the saving time when i use uh, the eight million rows or if you prefer what is the penalty for using one million rows in each segment and if i do the math so if i do this number minus this number and i divide the result by uh, this number i see that the cost is a 25 percent right which is a lot and let's do this here 24 percent so the additional cost for having one million rows for for this simple query which is just the sum of a single number across a column is so big first of all why is this happening so let's go to the whiteboard again so and let's try to explain what is causing that so in order to explain what is it, what is happening, I need to um, to figure out what is the execution. So let's see if I can show the entire thing here. This is too much. I have to understand whether it is visible in the screen or not. Okay, this should be good. Okay, let's go this way. Okay, good. So uh, let's say that I have my CPU, and if you remember, we have seen that we had a parallelism of around eight course using by running the query on Power BI which means that we can expect having something like 
one, two, and three. So we have a, a core zero, core one, core two, core three, core four, core five, core six, core seven. So this is the CPU that has eight cores that can process my data. When I request the sum, what happens? That the list of the, of the segments that is present in the table is uh, moved into a list of operations, a list of tasks that have to be executed. So imagine that there is a queue, a task queue here, which has uh, the list of all the segments that have to be processed. Now, when you have the uh, segment size at eight million rows, we had around 500, something like 500, uh, if I remember, yes, 500 and something segments. So imagine that, the, uh, let me check because I want to make sure that I had, so in Visual Analytics Analyzer, partitions, uh, it was uh, three nine. So I, I write down the numbers here. So we have three nine uh, something, 3900 segments in this case. Whereas in the case for the eight mineral rows, uh, we had, let me check, we had 517, I was, my memory is better than what I expect segments here. Okay, so this is the number of segments. So what 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 does it mean? That in the case of the, the task queue for the segment that has uh, uh, eight million rows in this segment, we have 517 tasks here. What happens for each task? Each task is uh, uh, moved into, so it's moving into this queue and then it has to be executed, it has to be dispatched to each core. And guess what? This operation, so imagine that the segment, this segment goes here, the segments goes here, the segments goes here. But at a certain point, this uh, core, the core one, finishes of processing the segment, and so another segment can be processed by a segment, so let's use the, the right one. This, this segment can be, again, processed by the core zero, and so on. So the cores process the segments, but this operation uh, requires time. The synchronization of the execution of the analysis of a segment requires time. And the, the question is, uh, how large is the segment? Because uh, the, to the total computation time, so let's move this here and let's uh, think about the time, right? Uh, let's say that at, at zero time we have the start of the operation, at the start of the processing of the, the sum. What happens at this point? We need a certain amount of time to dispatch the segment. Okay, what, what is this time? This time is the time required to perform this operation. We move the task from the list of the tasks to be computed to the uh, list of the operation that the, each single core has to execute. Then there is the actual scan. Now, how long it takes to scan a segment? Well, it depends on the size of the segment. And you can imagine that if the segment size is one million rows, it should be shorter compared to eight million rows. So if I get the same column, the scan for uh, a segment that has one million rows, let's say this one, one million, should be shorter, around eight times shorter than the segment that has eight million rows. Why? Because we have more rows to scan in memory. And this also depends on the size of the column. Because in a column that has um, high compression, the absolute size of the memory that has to be scanned is smaller than a large column. So we can imagine that if now we executed the scan for the weight column, right? What is the size of one segment in terms of RAM? Because we know, okay, we have one million rows, but how much RAM has to be scanned? Well, we can do the, some math. If I go back <clears throat> to the vertipack analyzer for the table, let's say that in the eight million rows version, the data size, the data size is what matters, is this number, 3667 megabytes. So if I go back to Excel, the memory, so the column, column sides, let's add, let's add another column sides here. And let's uh, add this one. 
So the column size for uh, the eight million rows is uh, three, six, six, seven, three, six, six, seven, one, forty-eight, forty-eight, forty-eight. Okay, so this is the number. Let's uh, format this uh, this way. Good, but how many segments do we have? Let's add here segments. We have, I think I wrote it down, but I don't remember, so I have to check in the partitions. We have 517 segments, 517. Whereas for the 1 million rows, we have a larger number of segments, 3902. And the, and the column size is something similar, but let's get the exact number. We have 3637, 3637, and 789, 936, 936. Okay, let's format this. And let's write segment, segment memory. What is the segment memory? It's just the division between this number and this number. Okay, so let's uh, do some consideration about these two numbers. More or less, we have one megabyte of RAM for one segment for this column in the case of the one million rows and eight megabytes of RAM for the case where we have eight million rows. Actually, we have less than one byte for each row in the, the table, which is a very good compression, by the way. But now let's go back to the whiteboard because now I have an interesting consideration. If this is the size for the weight column, right? The weight column has a size that is around one megabyte in this case and 7.9 megabytes in this other case. So is one to the ratio is one to eight. Why this is important? Because the, the cost for this dispatching operation doesn't change. There is another cost that I didn't display yet, which is at the end of the scan, there is the cost for moving the result to, um, to the thread that has to collect the results and sum the result of each segment together, which is another fixed cost. So let's say that this fixed cost is X and this is fixed cost is Y. So X plus Y is equal to a fixed cost. So let's see if, if it's visible. X plus Y is the fixed cost for uh, each segment, so fixed cost per segment. Whereas there is a variable cost, which is the uh, segment size in memory, which is a variable cost. Now, guess what? It is variable depending on the number of rows, but the importance of the the, of the um, reduction from 8 million rows to 1 million rows is higher when the size of the segment in RAM is smaller. What does it mean? Now, we used for this test the biggest column, which is uh, the weight multiplied by age column. It's one of the biggest ones. Actually, ID time is bigger too, but let's use age. What happens if I use the age? The age is much smaller. It's only 200 megabytes in this case and also smaller in the eight million rows so let's try so if i oh sorry i have to go back to this uh, demo so let me repeat this uh, this example so i was a highlight in the weight multiplied by age the weight multiplied by age has a uh, uh, three gigabytes and a half but if i sum the age column the age column is only 200 megabytes in ram of data and for eight million rows is uh, something similar so instead of using this evaluate statement, now I will use uh, some audience age. I know it doesn't make sense to sum the age, but I could do the average, for example. But let's try just to sum the age and see what happens. So if, you, if I run this request and I go in server timings, this is the result. Again, let's ignore the first one and let's repeat this operation three times. So this was the cost for the weight multiplied by age. We will use this later. Now we are computing the age. For the age we have 475, 73, 28. So let's repeat this again. We have 482, 73, 28, the same number. 
which makes sense because the, the size of the memory to scan is identical. So I'm not surprised we have a number that crawls, but in this case, it's, it's faster. It happens, it happens. 69, 69. Okay, so these are the three numbers. And if I get the best one, I would say we, we have, this is the best one. But let's repeat the same uh, operation using the um, eight million rows uh, side. So I go here, I repeat. So let's do this way multiplied by age we now try age and we run and we go in server timings and see what happens again let's ignore the first one but you can already see that there is a big difference this time and now you see that we have 125 1781 let's do this again then we have 130 and 1.18.59 and another one just to make sure that we get the best choice we have 1.30 and 1.19.53 okay that's fine so this this one is the best one so let's do the same with excel the same operation with excel because now we we repeated the same test so let's copy these numbers here and now we have for the storage engine with 8 million rows, the best value is 125 in 1781. For the 1 million row segment sides, we have 471. 471. So I'm comparing the best case, right? Because I want to see, okay, let's let's compare the best case possible, the best possible case. And if I try to copy and paste these two columns you see that this time the gain the improvement is uh, three times almost three times faster in terms of storage execution so why this because in this case if i go back to this uh, case what happened is that if we reduce this uh, oh, let's see if i can do this if we reduce the scan time now the scan time is much smaller and it's much smaller from a relative point of view for the same column, the eight million rows is still eight times the one million rows. But the ratio between the fixed part, this one, the fixed part, the fixed cost, and the variable cost is very different. Whenever, whenever I reduce the variable cost, the fixed cost is much more important. What does it mean? What is, what is the take out of that? If I go up to the VertiPack analyzer, and I go back here. We can imagine that when we, whenever we have a large table with many segments, if you have a table that has a 10, 20 segments, probably you will not see a big difference. But when you have thousands of segments, it makes sense to reduce this number. Actually, we can compute the difference. But before doing this calculation, we can see that if I look at the data, whenever I have columns that have a small number of unique values and a very high compression, having a smaller number of segments is way more important. Now, what is the cost of having these segments? We, we, we can actually compute it. So if I go back here, you see that the, the difference can be computed in the absolute difference between these two numbers in this case, because uh, actually, well, it's uh, maybe it's a little bit unfair, probably, but you see that when I had to compute this number of segments, this is the the the, the cost I had. So let's 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 get a very okay. Let, we can we can do a, a stupid test, which is let's try to get a very small a very small column like this ID view type. This is, ID view type is very small, right? So if I try to do this, what I'm computing is no longer the, actually, maybe this is unfair from another point of view, but if I try to do this calculation, what I'm computing now in the server timings is just the cost for the, the just the fixed cost, because the variable cost is so small, it's almost uh, can be ignored. And you see that when I execute this scan over ID view type, even though I'm scanning a very small, very small uh, column, actually, the cost is still 440 milliseconds and 6641 milliseconds, which, by the way, is, is a very close number to this one. So you see that when I had a, a segment 
that had uh, like 200 megabytes, the cost for scanning 200 megabytes was just the 300 milliseconds. Because now the cost we have is a 6641 milliseconds. So if I do a simple operation, let's say that, okay, let's round down to 6500. And let's say that I have 3902 segments here. What is the cost for each segment? If I divide the CPU cost by the number of segments, we have this number. We have one millisecond and a half for each segment. Okay, so if we can imagine that the cost is one, sec one millisecond and a half for each segment, a table that has 10 segments is not an issue. Actually, the, I think that the real cost is smaller than that, but let's say that if we, even just if you consider one millisecond of storage engine CPU, then you have to reduce that by the number of cores you have available. But again, the cost for splitting the calculation in multiple segments is present. What does it mean? When I have, let's do the same for the uh, 500 segments, just to check that my assumptions are right just a few seconds because it restores the connection sometimes it's slow okay if i repeat this execution and i repeat the execution the execution a couple of times you see we have 219 milliseconds the first time 1000 milliseconds the third time this time I, I think this is too much it's very variable at this point i had to say uh, it probably depends on other workload running on the same course. You see that I'm not executing over all the cores because I have only 12 as a parallelization factor. Yeah, it's a, it's a number that uh, it, it, it's, oh, this, this time I was lucky, 281 milliseconds, okay? And by the way, I got the best number when I used the smaller number of cores, which is, which is amazing because using more cores requires more time to synchronize the result coming from all these segments. So, but even though I keep this in a conservative way, so let's say that I took one second to process 512 segments or 509, and I copy this number. So in this case, the cost is, more, is almost uh, two milliseconds. I would probably stay on the safe side. I would say that on average, the, co the real cost is around one and two milliseconds, but you have the number now. So when your table has 10, 20 segments, you basically can ignore the problem, right? Because, uh, um, let's see, uh, let's see here. What does it mean? If I have in my table, let, let's see other tables we have in, the, in, this, uh, in this model. Instead of audience, let's take a look. Individual parameters, we have three segments. Or these tables have one segment. When you have one segment, you don't care. I mean, if you have one segment in uh, a segment size of one million rows, moving to eight million rows will not produce any difference, any effect. It's only when we have at least hundreds of segments that you can appreciate something. Because otherwise, if you move from 20 segments to two segments, you will see a reduction of around eight milliseconds in the storage engine, if you're lucky. But is 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 a small advantage. So let's let let's recap what we have seen. The ability to have a larger segment can be important when you have large tables. The importance of this reduction is, however, in the orders of milliseconds for uh, one, two milliseconds for each segment you are able to reduce, assuming that you have uh, scalability and cores and so on. Uh, of course, this could be very important when you query small columns, columns that have a very high compression and is relatively less important the larger the column is, because if you have a column that is not compressed well, like the initial column I used in my examples, even though we have seen an improvement in the storage engine execution, it was just in the order of 20-25%. Uh, I'm, I'm saying just, because if you have a slow query running in three seconds, it will not run in one second. It will run in two seconds and something. Whereas a difference of one order of magnitude is visible when you have columns that have a higher compression. So imagine a large table that has only columns with one, two, three, four, just a 10 or 20 different unique values that you use often in some aggregation, that that column is something that you want to optimize and that column could get the benefits of this reduction. So this is the seg what the segment size is about. 
uh, we're planning to create a more structured article comparing the numbers without waiting for the execution or everything but i think that the unplugged was a way to show uh, in a preview what we are working on for a future article and to explain the concept and the why the segment size uh, in increase uh, could be an advantage for very large models. Mm -hmm.